Occasionally, we see a curious phenomenon play out in the markets. Indices keep rising, but general sentiment remains doubtful. Following the monster performance in the fourth quarter of 2023, skepticism about the outlook for 2024 was plenty. Those who had forecasted a deep recession in 2023 were hesitant to concede, many opting instead to double down on their views for this year. Whether their predictions will materialize remains to be seen. Now, we think they won't, especially on the global stage. We did close our 2024 outlook in December with the following question. What if it goes right? And so far, the market seems to be answering. Asset prices are climbing across the board. So today, let's recap the market action of the last three months. I'm Philip Peterson, Chief Investment Strategist at IG Wealth Management. Join me each week as we discuss the trends dominating the investment landscape. It's the week of April 1st, so listen on as we navigate the living market. In the first quarter of the year, the economic landscape in Canada wasn't specifically or especially strong. It's a well-known fact, though, that the stock market here often charts its own course, somewhat detached from the broader economic trends of this country. In a period characterized by modest growth, the S&P TSX 60 managed to carve out a respectable 5% gain. This can largely be attributed to strong oil prices, with Western Canadian Select going from $52 to beginning the year to around $70 at the end of the quarter. However, it wasn't all smooth sailing, especially in the communications services sector, where companies like BCE, TELUS, and Rogers experienced notable declines, hitting drops of 10% or more. This was somewhat unexpected, considering the sector's reputation for stability and resilience, particularly in times when cautious spending and economic uncertainty prevail. Switching gears to the United States, the S&P 500 index train kept rolling full steam ahead, surging by an impressive 10% in the first quarter. The momentum in AI and tech played a significant role, like it did in the last quarter of 2023, but this time, however, marked a departure from the previous narrative of tech dominance. Financials, energy, and industrial sectors also made significant contributions to the index's gains. This broad-based rally is very healthy, and a good sign that we are beyond merely a tech revolution and now into an actual full market upswing. Despite the bullish trends, U.S. real estate found itself on the back foot. Commercial real estate remains an issue globally, with demand being lowered by work-from-home initiatives. What's interesting here is that this was widely seen as a trigger for market problems over the last few years, but so far, the issue seems contained. Similar to the TSX, defensives were not the best sectors. Utilities remained stagnant. So we are in a market environment where defensive sectors are overshadowed by the allure of a thriving American economy, and that's good news. Internationally, the spotlight shifted towards European tech and luxury sectors, with standout performances from Ferrari, Hermes, ASML Holdings, and SAP. Meanwhile, Japan had a quarter for the history books, gaining approximately 20% over the quarter in Canadian dollar terms for the Nikkei. This is especially notable following the Bank of Japan's rate hike and move away from its long-dated zero-interest rate policy. This exemplifies a key market principle. Surpassing expectations is often much more impactful than just delivering solid performance. On the fixed income front, bond yields reverted to their November 2023 levels, which, of course, fixed income investors did not like. The 10-year Canadian government bond, for example, saw a nearly 3% drop in value over the last quarter. This negative correlation observed between stocks and fixed income may be frustrating to bond investors, but in the long run, it's a positive sign. When bonds and stocks walk hand in hand, the reasons to own fixed income are less obvious. We can now expect support from fixed income if economic news were to disappoint. Valuations, meanwhile, remain on the higher side for the S&P 500, but the rally isn't purely tech-driven anymore. This new breadth is a strong signal that we're in a healthy market. Good economic news and strong earnings growth will, however, be required to extend the rally through the year ahead. Good news, then, because that's exactly what the macro data is suggesting. I'm Philip Peterson, and you've been listening to The Living Market. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment to rate it or share it with colleagues and friends. It will help other like-minded individuals find us. Thanks for listening. The content of this podcast, including facts, views, opinions, and recommendations, is not to be used or construed as investment advice and is not an offer or an invitation to buy or sell any security. 
The content of this podcast should not be relied upon for any purpose, and IG Wealth Management is not responsible for any reliance upon it. This podcast includes forward-looking information that reflects our current expectations or forecasts of future events. Forward-looking information is subject to risks, uncertainties, and assumptions that could cause actual results to differ materially from expressed herein. Our views are subject to change based on market conditions. Commissions, fees, and expenses may be associated with mutual fund investments. Read the prospectus before investing. Mutual funds are not guaranteed, values change frequently, and past performance may not be repeated.